Fit MC. What's going on, everybody? This is Fit MC, and today there's something we need to discuss about 2B2T. Now, I've debated making this video for about two years, but I never had a reason to delve into this topic until recently. There is so much that I have to tell you. I hope you're sitting down for this because it's time to tell you about the history of 2B2T that has been kept secret from you intentionally by myself and by others. Today, we're going to talk about the day 2B2T almost died and how the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft isn't actually an anarchy server. We're going to talk about a history of backdoor access, lies and deceit, and the server event that almost killed 2B2T for good. When it comes to discussing the history of the server, I have not been entirely honest with you over the past two years, and I've left out some key details for reasons I'm going to explain later in the video. But let me tell you why I've decided to finally make this video. House, if you're watching this right now, I just want to say that I appreciate that you've kept 2B2T running all of these years, and I hope you will not be mad and rather understand why I've brought this up. The 2B2T player base, the FitMC fans, and all the players that have quit 2B2T deserve to know the truth about this place. Now, a few weeks ago, I posted this image to the 2B2T subreddit. It's a screenshot I had taken after I'd slept in a bed in order to skip the night on the server, which is a really rare occurrence. This was taken on 2B in late April of 2016. About two months before the Camping Rusher made his famous 2B2T video, the image was 100% upvoted on the subreddit, which surprised me since the subreddit hates YouTubers. But in the image, you'll notice I am the only player online. That's right, the only player online on 2B2T.org. And that's because the majority of the player base had quit. That's right, that was a normal evening on 2B. I was the only player online. Most of the players had quit because of the drama that went down in 2016 and it almost killed the server. Housemaster deleted this post after only 30 minutes and I thought it was strange that a historical image like this would get swept under the rug just because I had mentioned spring of 2016. This already should be a red flag. Sato posted some memes to the subreddit a few days later, and one of his images just happened to mention the back door of 2016. Meme posts are normally kept up if they have a little bit of effort put into them, and Sato definitely put the effort in, but Housemaster also deleted this post. It's clear to me that Housemaster has been actively censoring posts about this topic on the subreddit. It's clear he's trying to hide what went down in the spring of 2016, but YouTube is my platform, and he can't censor me here. It's time all of you knew the truth. I'm going to be using Sato's timeline to put these events into chronological order. While Sato's timeline, it's not perfect, and there are some issues with it, it is the best one to use for reference in this video. It's the most widely accepted one by the community. This one's a little outdated. This one only goes to 2017, and I know Sato's currently working on the current one. But anyway, with all that being said, this is when 2B was founded. This is when I became a server regular. And then this is where all this drama began, 2014. I was just a 2B2T player at that point. I was not a YouTuber. I was just a normal player, just like you, before the server was world famous. In July of 2014, a strange message appeared on the 2B2T website. Yeah, that's right, 2B2T, it used to have a website, and it was run by House. It was paid for by the players. It was a legitimate website. But Housemaster had left this message. It says, Housemaster has left 2B2T forever and is no longer in charge. The server will continue like normal though, and will be operated by an anonymous friend. Now this message confused a lot of us. I mean, what did he mean? An anonymous friend? Is the server going to die? What do you mean things are going to be normal? 
Well, there was an immediate change in quote-unquote housemaster's behavior after this message. When emailed, originally his responses were calm and they were polite. But afterwards, they were kind of rude and slightly condescending. And it's a trait still seen in his messages today. Also something to note that the headers of his messages originally were in Swedish. But after this change, they were now no longer in Swedish. That was also a little bit suspicious. Now, for the rest of 2014, nothing really unusual happened. But in April 2015, the April Fool's event was released. And it had a Middle Eastern Jihad theme to it. This footage is all I have from that April Fool's map. Some of you have probably seen this video a long time ago on my channel. Now, here's some screenshots from that map, and it was a really fun April Fool's event. Don't get me wrong, I loved it, it was hilarious. But, the admin was using a Jihad and a MIDI radio plugin. Jihad was a TNT plugin used to give the players TNT and other explosive devices, and MIDI radio would play songs across the whole server with no blocks. These plugins were both on the player I Tristan's GitHub page. Now his name might sound familiar if you see my previous videos. He's definitely a 2v2t legend up there with Pyrobite. But during the April Fools event, Tristan was able to adjust the jihad command on the spot and apply the changes almost instantly, implying he had some sort of access that we didn't. Tristan was one of our base mates at Asgard too, so the fact that he had access made us feel pretty uneasy. And looking back, if you remember, when we got to the world border, the sign that was left there was from Pyrobite and I, Tristan. So that just goes to show you, even as early as 2013, there were some backdoor shenanigans going on here. It was already really suspicious. Little did we know that at the time, I, Tristan was part of a secret group on 2B2T called Tyranny whose main goals involved taking control of the server from Housemaster. The group consisted of I, Tristan, the leader of the group, Pop Bob, 2B2T's most notorious griefer, Clyde, one of my old base mates and a master of social engineering, Jared 2013, the loose cannon, and Taylor, a fierce PvPer. Him and I had a fierce PvP rivalry spanning multiple years. It was already known that House was never truly a hands-off admin. He had world-edited Spawn before, and had actually befriended players such as Imps and Octopia. There were rumors that House had world-edited bases into the map for his friends, but whether that is true or not has never really been proven. House was also friends with I, Tristan, a mistake that almost cost the server its life. When the server returned from the April Fool's map, something had changed. Withers had become re-enabled after having been disabled for quite some time. They were enabled on the same day that Tyranny griefed Ormonger's Mesa base. And then, the very next day, suspiciously, Withers became disabled again. Now, not too long after this, Asgard 2 gets griefed, sparking the third incursion. During the incursion, Tristan betrayed the incursion by trying to protect Jared. It was during this time that I was forced into one versus one PvP combat with Tristan. After going through multiple sets of armor, I finally managed to kill him. This didn't make Tyranny very happy. Jared came at me, but I killed him. Talo came after me, but he fell for my fall trap, and I killed him. The incursion had fought off Tyranny, and won for now. Are you still with me? Good, because this is where it gets insane, and where the truth finally begins to leak about what had been happening behind the scenes, behind our backs. The year is now 2016. Pop Bob had not been seen on the server in a while. Players were carrying on as usual, and bases like Aureus City and Space Valkyria continue to thrive. 
A brand new exploit had just become public. The Bed Teleport exploit, or Bed TP. Players were able to use beds to travel far distances in the nether, abusing Minecraft's respawn mechanic in the overworld. Now how it would work is that you would sleep in a bed in the overworld, and then you would go to those exact same coordinates in the nether, which is eight times as far away. And you'd put down a bed facing the exact same direction as the first bed. You'd leave the nether, kill yourself, and you'd respawn at the bed in the nether, assuming that someone had placed a bed there at the next warp point. You could set up a chain of beds that would lead you out into the millions. And remember, each time you traveled, the distance multiplied by eight, so by the last jump, you were easily going over a million blocks. Many players used this method to travel to the lands, a legendary base abandoned long ago. They wanted to see the base for themselves in person and build there with Jack the Ripper, who was very proud of his base. Jared became enraged when he learned that Jack was inviting people to the lands. So he attempted to ride the bed chain all the way to the lands. When it was discovered that Jared was coming, Jack ordered the bed chain to be broken as quickly as possible. The last bed in the chain was destroyed. And it seemed that Jared would be cut off from the lands for good. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. But then, the unthinkable happened. Out of nowhere, Pop Bob logged in at the final link and reconnected it. Jared finally had a path to the lands. This is the first time that Pop Bob had logged on in months, and this would be his final act of treachery. He logged out for the final time and never returned to the server in any real capacity ever again. Now that the chain was reopened, Jared had access to the lands, but he was not alone. Talo was with him brandishing a 32k sword given to him by Tristan. Everyone at the lands did what they could to defend, but it was no use. Talo killed everyone, and Jared began to grieve. After the lands fell, all of the members of the base were upset. Right after the lands got griefed, Ormonger's next base is mysteriously found by Tyranny and griefed. And once again, Withers became enabled just for the grief, and then were instantly disabled. This was a major red flag. This caused James Russells to begin investigating Tristan's GitHub page, and while doing so, he noticed something odd. Tristan had uploaded some new files and left them public, likely on accident. James downloaded everything he could, and showed the files to a few other people, including Kane's Law. Since James and Kane's were both members of Aureus, I got to hear what was going on. But I was away from the city gathering artifacts for the soon-to-be museum, and I wasn't really too interested at the time. Upon closer inspection, Kane's realized what they had in their possession. They were region files of 2B2T. Not world downloads, region files, which can only be obtained by taking them directly from a server. These files would give numerous coordinates that were investigated immediately. There were stashes, spawn bases, and builds included in these region files. But the very last one they investigated is what blew the lid off this entire thing. Keynes, Jack, and a few others ended up finding Tristan's secret base stocked with 32k weapons, 32k tools, player and mob heads, and all sorts of illegal items. When looking into the chests further, Kane's found something that had never been seen before on 2B2T. Barrier blocks. The only way these could even exist in survival is if an admin spawned them in directly. Was Housemaster supplying Tyranny with these items? Did they have some kind of direct access to the server? Yellowstone Joe was able to identify the fact that the base was in newer chunks, meaning that everything there was recently made. Jack stored some of the items. Silver Crown King also had a stash, and Kane's stashed some of the items as well. 
When Kane's Law returned to Aureus City and showed me the barrier blocks, I was floored, but also instantly was on edge. I knew things were only going to get worse from here. Once Tristan discovered that his stash had been raided, he took the members of Tyranny and did what would be their final major act on the server. Two major griefs, long distances apart, back to back, Space Valkyria and King's Landing, a display of force to show their power. Tyranny traveled instantly to Space Valkyria in the end and griefed it. Once they were done griefing it, they created an exit portal at Space Falk out of thin air. Come on! This is getting ridiculous. They literally spawned an exit portal with illegal portal frames out of thin air and landed safely back in the overworld where they went directly to King's Landing and griefed it. How? How do they know these locations? How was this possible? The player base was outraged. Normally, a grief is a grief and you get over it. But two major griefs, back to back, long distances apart in different dimensions, spawning end portals using illegal items, the community began to suspect that this was more than just a back door and began crying foul. Little did we know how much worse it actually was. While trying to seek information, Jack was talking to an old friend on the server, the Pompano. After talking for a while, Jack noticed that his behavior seemed a bit unusual. He told him, let's continue this conversation on Steam. Once contacted via Steam, Pompano said he had no idea what Jack was talking about, that he hadn't been on 2B in a long time. This meant that someone had hacked into Pompano's account. With further research, it turned out that there had been a Chinese database leak with thousands of emails and passwords that had been passed around the dark net. Pompano's email was part of this leak, and it ended up being the same email and password for his Minecraft account. Someone was trying to socially engineer Jack with a hacked account, and suddenly, it all made sense. If someone had been able to hack Pompano, what if someone had been able to hack other accounts, including Housemaster himself? The nightmare became a reality when it was revealed that one of Housemaster's accounts, George Bush 420, was included in the database leak and the tyranny had been using it. The account was seen building its spawn in creative mode and all hell broke loose. This was the proof. Years of suspicion, years of these players denying anything, calling us paranoid. This was the proof. Tyranny had direct access to operator status. Game over. Welcome to the 2B2T Dark Ages. Tyranny had been using the OP status to literally make themselves gods. The back door was so deep that Tristan even had player data files meaning that even the contents of our ender chests were not secret anymore. Our bed locations, everything about our accounts, our join dates, it was all leaked. The entire community came together in protest. How could House have let this happen? How could he have turned a blind eye to all of this? The outrage caused Housemaster to finally take action, but not publicly. He took back all access to admin, deleted all the super weapons and barrier blocks that had not been placed yet, and didn't say a word to anybody. Late April 2016, the server is dead. The player base had quit since their server was no longer anarchy. After losing their power and becoming just like everyone else, Tristan, Talo, and the rest of Tyranny slowly began to stop playing. At this point, the 2B2T timeline actually splits. A large majority of the player base at this time migrates to Constantium.net to begin life on an actual anarchy server. Some of the old 2B culture is actually still alive to this day on Constantium, and it's the best view of what life was like on 2B before the drama went down. Many players just quit 2B for good and in turn Minecraft and never came back. Those of us few that stayed, we were angry. 
everything we had done didn't matter. OP access meant that hundreds of bases had been compromised instantly without any of us ever knowing. Inside, I was disappointed and I was mad. I had just wasted three years of some of my spare time on a server where I was given the illusion of anarchy, when in reality, I could have been destroyed at any time instantly. May 2016, the server is in the worst shape it's ever been in. An average of three to six players on during peak hours, with no donations coming in at all. Some of us, myself included, continued to play, but we were jaded and we didn't know what to do. The server was about to die. It was literally about to die. But then, out of nowhere, June 1st, 2016, Rusher makes his video on 2B2T, and in comes the waves of his kitty fans. Now, fueled by the rage of what had gone down, we began mercilessly killing them. The night that myself and Sato came up with the idea for Team Veteran, we had a vision. This was the answer. YouTubers could save 2B2T. Russia acknowledged Team Veteran and we began the conflict that would bring worldwide fame to Two Builders Two Tools. With 75 million views of 2B2T content all across YouTube in a single summer. Russia saved 2B2T from death. I bet you never thought you'd hear me say that. While Russia was my enemy and our groups were at war, him and I, we worked together. And our conflict allowed us to remake 2B2T in our own image, our vision. Instead of being a place for edgy nerds to hang out, we turned it into a roleplay battlefield, a server that would disgust tyranny and make them never want to return. 2B2T was about to evolve. War was the business that was going to keep 2B2T alive and save it, not destroy it. That being said, brings me to the main point of this entire video. 2B2T was never a true anarchy server. Housemaster gave his friends privileges that ended up being used against him, against us, and against the server. House has never publicly admitted that this has happened. He has never publicly admitted that he got pwned, and he's been covering it up for over two years. He censors all discussion of this on the 2B2T subreddit, and most of the people that wanted this truth brought about have already quit. Pyrobite and Tristan, they both had backdoor access at one point in their 2B2T careers. They were equals, but Pyro never weaponized his backdoor. He never used it maliciously. He just used it to spawn illegal items, to travel to the world border, and he created the player heads that exist on the server even today. He never used it maliciously against another player, which is why he is considered the true king of 2B2T. Pyrobite had the ultimate power and had the restraint to never use it. Tristan used his maliciously, and it almost killed 2B2T in the process. If Russia hadn't have shown up, this server would be dead. It would not exist anymore. <sighs> Are you still with me? I'm sure you got a lot of questions. Like, Fit, why did you never mention or show the barrier blocks that were at Aureus? Yeah, if you had poked around the ruins of Aureus after my video, you might have found these barrier blocks. Why did you never tell us about these barrier blocks? Why did you keep the griefers of Space Vulk a secret in your original video? You never mentioned Tristan or Clyde or anyone in the Tyranny. Why did you wait almost two years to tell us this? Well, the reason why I've waited so long to make this video is because I didn't want the influx of new users and fans to know the truth, or else they would have been repulsed by 2B2T and quit right after the Russia War ended. It would have killed 2B2T's worldwide momentum, it would have killed my channel's momentum and I would have never made it to the silver play button. And 2B2T would have fallen into financial ruin with no conflict or advertisement. War is the business that keeps 2B2T alive. 
If you play on 2B2T and you legitimately hate YouTubers like myself or Rusher or Ant Venom, you're a moron. YouTubers saved this server. I watched this server almost die. YouTubers brought it back to life. So next time you decide to complain about YouTubers, you should thank us. We saved this server for you. I'm sorry, I just get a little heated because, of course, because 2B2T is very contrarian in nature. Everyone loves to hate on YouTubers. Well, guess what? We're the reason you're even still playing on that server. So show some respect. <sighs> sorry, my rant is over. If you're new to the channel and you're wondering why we're trying to fight YouTubers and their fans constantly, see the real picture here. By killing them, we are actually embracing them and their change that they bring to the server. New players and new fan bases cause the server to evolve. It keeps 2B2T thriving and it lets us forget this server's troubled past. I hope you can all learn from the past so that these mistakes are never made in the future. Even to this day, players attempt all sorts of exploits. They set up fake accounts to get backdoored plugins installed, but Housemaster's on top of it these days. Like I said, I'm sorry it had to come to this house, but your censorship and the fact that you've never publicly admitted that this has happened made me want to delve into this topic and show the world what really went down. But that's it for today's block game drama. If you're new here and you're not completely repulsed by what you have just witnessed, make sure to subscribe. And to all my 2B2T comrades and friends out there, old and new, make sure you stay alive. And I especially want to thank all the players that contributed to this video today. All the players listed here. Without you, I wouldn't have been able to fill in the gaps that I was unable to experience myself. Thank you so much. Boys, our story is finally heard. The truth is finally out there and no one is going to forget that 2B2T is not truly an anarchy server. Do not believe Housemaster's lies.